Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do the first adventure of Trudevang Legends, just the base game. Uh, that's all that's out now. I backed the whole game <laughs> way back in, what was that, 2019? And we've gotten the base game now. There's been lots of iterations of this game. It is very much a choose your own adventure game. This is not your normal board game. You're going to be spending a lot of time reading from the book of sagas. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, hang out with me here. I can show you that first adventure. Just know, A, there's going to be a ton of spoilers, so make sure you're okay with that. And B, the main mechanism in this game will be bag building. I'm going to be playing as two characters. We're going to be building these bags of runes, drawing from them for combat and skill checks. It should be interesting. <laughs> Doug Herring also has a playthrough of this, so I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out and see how different his uh, scenario of chapter one is compared to mine. Good way to see the differences and how replayable this game is. Now, I have seen reviews that hated this game, and I've seen reviews that have been okay, and I've seen these uh, a review that said they really loved it. So it really depends upon what you're looking for. This game, uh, Mike says, it's very similar to Role Player Adventure, where it's more about the story than the actual mechanics. And there is something to note here is there is no possible way for you to lose this game. You're just going to go through the adventure and depending upon the choices you make, things will happen in the world. And there's these cool mechanics of sliding cards into the board and onto the storyboard for different actions and whatnot, which is, uh, I think, very interesting. I'm very curious to see if I'm going to like this or not. I have not done a practice play. This will be the first time that I'm playing it. So uh, bear with me. Let's do a very very quick setup because it is very easy to set up and then we'll start our playthrough reminding you once again spoilers 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 just for that first chapter for now all right without further ado let's jump into setup before you start your first adventure, you need to set up your stories and phases board. This board, it's got these clear plastic uh, liners here, and you're going to be sliding cards in and out of it during the game. You start with two about leveling up and being defeated, as well as three phases, phases two, three, and four. Those will be the only phases we'll use right now. That's travel, engage, and explore. We'll take a look at all three of those quickly. At the start of each round, we'll have a choice whether we'd like to travel. Each hero in a region without enemies related to a point of interest may travel to an adjacent region. Heroes will lose one health for each enemy present in the region that they're moving from. A ship is required to cross sea borders, so we currently will not be able to move into the sea spaces, uh, but we'll be able to move to adjacent locations. And even if there's enemies there, we can move unless it's a point of interest enemy. Then we have to defeat that to move on. Next, we'll have the engage phase. Heroes fight enemies and activate personalities in their region, or if the region is free of enemies, you can draw and resolve one event for each region occupied by heroes that are not aboard a ship. Finally, we have the explore phase. Heroes in regions free of enemies can interact with a point of interest and or a location in their region. So you can do both. Otherwise, if you're in a region with enemies and you have not defeated them, you simply skip this step. Let's talk about leveling up and being defeated. Heroes level up by collecting three experience points. You discard the experience points and draw the top three cards from your upgrade deck. I'll show you that in a second. Then you choose one feat to be upgraded. Discard the lower version of that card from your feat deck and replace it with the upgrade. Reshuffle the deck after. From the remaining two cards, choose one and return it to the top of the deck, and the other one is going to be placed at the bottom. When a hero has upgraded all their level one feats, they may also add one ultimate card to their deck. We have defeat. If a hero is defeated, they must reset their health to six at the next round. If they don't have a weird card, weird card, <laughs> randomly add one to their feat deck and shuffle it. If there isn't a darkness card in the stories, also add card CS156 to it. Just so I can show you, we have these different regions here. If we stayed in this region, we'd be able to do the explore because there's no enemies here. However, if we moved into this region, we'd have to first defeat these two Draugrs before we'd be able to do any sort of exploration here. We could also move out of that region, but then we would take two damage because there are two enemies in that region while we try and move away. We currently have four locations on the board. One of them is the City of Vod, and this is one of the actions that you can take when you explore. You can refresh your hero, pay two Chronicle Points, and think of Chronicle Points kind of as a currency in this game, and then you gain one Agility Token to your bag. We also have the City of Manjord, and that is in Manjord. 
We also have the city of Idlebad, which is in the region Dranvelt. And finally, we have the city of Stornhan, and that's in Wildlands. For our playthrough of this game, we are going to play two characters. You can technically play it as a solo character with a helping hand. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to play two characters because if you're playing this, you could be playing co-op. So I just want to show that. Plus, that's the way I like to play. <laughs> so our first character here is Volger. Volger is a dwarf and a warrior. He has a total of 11 health. So you can see I put that here. We start at zero chronicle. So we have that down here. He will have his level one item face up. That's his sword and shield or warrior's weapons. If you look down here, you can see how we set up uh, Volger's bag. We have a total of one for intelligence. <laughs> I mean, he's not that smart of a warrior, I guess. He has two charisma rune tokens. He has three agility, four strength, and then five darkness. Darkness is always bad. You'll see how that works in the playthrough, but that gives him his total of 15 rune tokens in his bag. He can, as an ability, exhaust this to return the chips from that he just drew for some sort of uh, combat and put it back in his bag, and then he has to flip himself over. And then potentially negative effects happen because of that. So you don't really want to do that, but that's kind of a get out of jail free. <laughs> Each character starts with eight level one feat cards, and you're going to shuffle those up. For an example, you can see this one is Crush, specific to his uh, type of warrior. But there's also ones, let's see, here we go. This one is dealing with Vulgar himself. And they, you can see they all say level one. So I've grabbed all of those. I'm going to randomly shuffle those together. During combat, you're going to draw a random set of four of those each time, and you're trying to complete those to be able to do damage to enemies. We then have his upgraded feet cards here. I have on the top of the stack all of his level two feet cards of those ones that we have level ones of. And then I have two ultimates in there. And then I put the legendary ones on the bottom. Nowhere do they say where to put the legendary ones. I'm assuming you put them below the ultimates. I have no idea. Maybe that's wrong. If you know, let me know. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is we are going to make him the first or active player. So generally we're going to stay together from what I have seen of this game. But if we do end up splitting up, he'll always activate first. He will have the orange bag. So we're going to be drawing from the orange bag with those 15 runes in it. On this side of the board, we have Catalie. She will be our Vintner Weaver, kind of like a spellcaster. Uh, she has her eight starting feats. She starts at nine health instead of 11. She has the Vintner Weaver spell. She can spend two of the Chronicles to deal one damage two times. Kind of cool. Her upgraded feats as well. She has for her runes, four intelligence, two charisma, two agility, two strength, and five darkness. With that all out of the way, we are ready to start our playthrough. You can see how quick it is to get it set up and get it onto the table. And what's nice is your characters can save pretty easily. The board state will save because those are sleeved slots on the boards. So I do really, really like that. So far, I'm enamored with this game. We'll see if that continues as we play it. So this is where spoilers are happening. So uh, stop it if you don't want to see it. Otherwise, we'll begin with chapter one. Travelers, welcome to Trudvang, a vast land of heroic sagas and epic adventures. Like many sagas, this one begins in the golden light of autumn, as you sit about the fire drinking honeyed mead and sharing tales with your fellow travelers. Your respite is interrupted by a harried courier, happy to have found you so quickly. The courier presents a letter from your mentor, the ancient elf Krijanti, who trained you and so many others in your youth. He urges that you hasten to his tower in Aijland. You've not heard from him in a good while, but Krijanti is ancient and wise and he would not seek you over trifling matters. In the pre-dawn light you take the road itself beset with the usual perils. Yet your hearts are uneasy for different reasons altogether. So first thing we need to do is take Adventure Sheet C1 and place it inside the Points of Interest board. Place all heroes in Aijland. Reveal enemy cards CS100, the Drugar, CS101, the Forest Troll, and CS102, the Garm. Place two Forest Trolls in Dran Dranvelt. Place two Dragurs in Troll Ridge Mountains and two in Wildlands. And reveal Point of Interest A. Here we have our point of interest board. Now, normally these are blank. There's cards that you actually slide into here for each adventure. So we slid in, oh, what is that, C20 into this space. And now we're going to reveal the A1. So let me open this up and we can read it. We have Krajanti's Tower. The Tower of Krajanti, your old mentor, you received a message from him requesting your urgent 
presence. So when we decide to interact with this, we'll read uh, C1-001. You can see I've already set up the minions on the board. We need to place that point of interest token here at Ijland, and we can interact with that during the explore phase. Here we have our three enemy cards. I'm sure we're going to see these often. From what I understand, there's lots of combat. <laughs> Uh, these Dragurus, so basically the skeletons, have four health attack for two, no shield. If they ever flip a card with this symbol, they will, it, it says here exhaust, which means you have to exhaust your hero or take plus two damage. Ouch. Uh, then we have the Garm. They have five health attack for two, no armor. If either one of those symbols are up, you actually gain a negative status effect. I do really like how these status effects work in this game. You're going to have a mist track, and as long as you manage that mist track, you will not be activating any of these negative status effects. But if you try and push your luck too hard and you get too far on that mist track, then you're going to trigger all of the red negative uh, status effects. So this may not hurt you so long as you don't get too far on the mist track. And you'll see how that works when we do combat. Finally, we have the Forest Trolls. Three health, attack for two. They all attack for two. And this one is just going to make you discard boon effects. So those are positive status effects. They're the blue ones. And once again, that one also deals with managing your miss track. If you get very few misses, you can actually activate the benefits uh, on your miss track. And th that would be all the blue status effects. Fortunately for our heroes, we're currently in the location where we have a point of interest, so it seems to make no sense for us to try and travel. So during the travel phase, we're going to stay where we are. That means we'll move to the engage phase. Now there's no enemies there, it's free of enemies, that means we have to draw an event card. Our event is the Law of the Strong. A group of marauders approaches. They're obviously looking to rob you. Each hero in the party must perform a strength check. If at least one hero succeeds, the Marauders run away in fear. Each hero gains one Chronicle Point. If all heroes fail, you manage to save your possessions, but not without injuries. Each hero exhausts or loses two health. Ouch. On your character sheet, it tells you how you resolve tests. What we will do is draw from our bag. We'll draw a total of seven tokens. We're looking for three strength symbols or more to succeed. That means I don't even have to try Catley. She's going to fail. She only has two. There's no way she can get three. We don't have wilds, you know, anything. So it's really up to Vulgar to be able to protect us from these marauders. So what you do is you grab from your bag and you randomly start revealing. So we've got one, two, three. Okay, I have one strength. Come on, give me more strength. Oh, one, two, three, four. And then two more, five, six. Oh, I need one more strength. One more strength. Let's see how we do. That's a third strength. We have one, two, three. So we have three strength. That means we were able to pass that test. I was not expecting that. Uh, most people say you fail tests a lot in this game. So I was just assuming we were going to fail that. But that's okay. We'll take it. So that means each of us will gain one Chronicle Point. Both of our characters will move from zero to one. Grijanti welcomes you warmly. I am relieved to see you again, my friends. My days are troubled and my nights restless. The snow saga is in jeopardy. From his pocket, he pulls a mystic stone, beautiful and white, almost thrumming with power. I have guarded it for centuries. In my waking hours, I kept it on my person. At night, it returns to the vault. You know well this task is laid upon your mentor's shoulders, but you're unsure of the true extent of this artifact's power. You know Oktar, Jarl of Storhaven? Troubles stalk his land, and he has asked me for aid. I would send you to Wildland if you're willing, but the hour is late and your old rooms await you. We shall make counsel tomorrow. Your slumber that night is populated by a nightmare. A mighty warrior, taller than most men, passes your window, climbing the tower. He is armed with two massive cleavers that have never known honest work. You awake at midday. You've slept far longer than normal and feel weary as after a day of chopping wood very unnatural. You seek Krijanti, but no one answers. In his private quarters in the uppermost chamber, you find your old mentor dead in his bed, the sheets soaked through with his blood. A cry of anguish escapes you unbidden. Well, that wasn't a nightmare. It really happened. Bloody tracks are apparent on the floor from the bed to the window. Someone must have climbed the tower. Was your dream truly prophetic? The Snow Saga. You race down the tower to the vault, only to find bloody footsteps on the marbled floor, the vault door shattered, and the snow saga missing. Poor Krijanti did not deserve his fate, and had always stressed how vital it was that this mysterious artifact of the distant past never fell into the wrong hands. Now it has happened. 
any hero in the party may perform an intelligence three to investigate the scene, uh, the crime scene. If at least one hero succeeds, read entry C1, uh, C1-023. If all heroes fail, continue to read. It says any hero. We know we're going to do Cadley. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four. Okay, I have two. I only need two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Actually, that's all I need. I don't even, whatever. We'll draw the seventh one. Uh, there we go. Some charisma as well. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> but I have three intelligence. The murder weapon is apparent. A shard of black crystal, unnaturally cold, deeply buried in Krijanti's heart. You feel a strange sensation touching it. Be cautious. Nothing short of powerful magic could have killed the child of light so easily. A hero in the party gains item card CS016 Black Crystal Shard. Meanwhile, dark forces gather in the north. Place one forest troll in the wildland. You can follow the bloody footsteps to seek your mentor's assassin or go to the wildland and find Jar Oktar as Krijanti wanted. Here we have the Black Crystal Shard. This one costs two Chronicle Points to activate. Then what you do instantly when you activate it, discard all darkness drawn and lose one health. It can help you if you're having some bad draws. Another interesting part about this game is how items work. So I'm going to place that item beneath the Vintner Weaver's spells. I can't use it until I use this item. Once I use this item, it slides to the bottom of the deck and the other one becomes active. So you only have one item to choose at a time, but at the beginning of each adventure, you get to order those items in any order you wish. We also have to place a forest troll in the wild lands. So now we have three enemies there. That's not going to be fun. <laughs> we now can reveal points of interest B and C, and likely that's going to determine whether we're going to try and find out who killed our uh, mentor or if we're going to try and find uh, Jarl Okhtar. The tracks of Kirjanti's assassin seem to point west in the direction of the Trollage Mountains. Jarl Okhtar, the most powerful man in Wildland, warned Krijanti of the dangers in his land and requested your visit. He is still unaware of the murder of your old mentor. The Trollage Mountains are right next to where we are, and the Wildland is a little bit farther away up here, and it has three enemies. I don't know about you, but I am definitely interested in who assassinated Krijanti, so I think for our travel phase, we are going to move into the Troll Ridge Mountains. It's adjacent, so we can do that for our travel phase. There's no enemies in the location that we left, so we don't lose any health. Now, though, during the engage phase, because there are two of these enemies, these are the Draugr, we now have to move to combat. If you recall, the Draugrs each have four health, and they each attack for two damage. However, there is, just like in Gloomhaven, an enemy uh, deck that you're going to reveal cards from. It could increase or decrease their attack amounts and also potentially activate their effect here. So, what we start with with combat, the first step is the planning step. After the planning step, we move to the resolution step. What we can first do is choose to activate any items or companions with instant effects. Now we have one, the Vintner Weaver's spells, but we need two chronicle points to use it, so I can't. Then what we do is we each draw four cards from our feet deck. So up top here, we have Catley's uh, cards, and down here, we have uh, Vulgar's cards. Now what we'll do is we'll draw three runes at a time and try and place those runes onto these cards so that we can activate them. For an example, for Vulgar, if we can get a Strength and a Strength or a Charisma one, we could activate Crush one, dealing four damage. That would take one of those guys out right, right away. So let's start with him. You're supposed to do this simultaneously, but since I'm doing both of them, I will do them kind of together, so to speak. So here's our first three tokens for Vulgar. And then we'll draw three for Cali. Uh, we've got two there. Oh, there's a darkness and a charisma. And here's our third. So we for sure know for Vulgar, we're going to do this and this. That will mean one of those Draugrs will be taken out. We don't activate this now. We'll activate that during the resolution phase. But we do know that this has been completed. Unfortunately, this darkness token, we can't put anywhere on here. So we're going to put it on our mistrack. I'll do that in a second. Let's look at Cali. We have one darkness that we'll have to place on our mist track. It's now the question of where do we want to put our charisma and our agility. I could put both on here, and I might do that, although uh, we either have to lose, if we activate that, we'll have to lose two of our chronicle points, which we don't have, so then I think we'd have to lose two health. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, because gaining a positive status effect can be super helpful. Now, both of these, one for each of us, are going to have to go onto our mist track. 
The mist track is kind of awesome in this game. You're going to start from left to right. If ever you fill this all the way up to the top here, you have to stop drawing runes. As long as you have open spaces, you can continue to draw three runes at a time and then choose when to stop. If after we've decided to stop, we end in this blue area, then any of the blue positive effects here will be taken into account. So for an example, we gain one Chronicle point. If we end here in this uh, brown location, we don't get the positive or the negative effects. If we get all the way to the end, then only the negative effects will happen here. And this one is minus two health. So that's not good. But we only have one on here for Vulgar. Catalyst will also place one darkness here as well. And we have now ended that first draw. We're both going to continue to draw from our bags. We'll start with Catalyst. She will draw three tokens. One, two, three. That is amazing. Three intelligence. Oh yeah, Vintner Blast uh, or the True Sight. That will work. We've got two and three for Vulgar. That's okay, another darkness, but two more that I am happy to see. Ooh, this is deal damage equal to the total amount of block that's blocked by a feed card. I'm not blocking anything yet. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to place my intelligence here and my strength over here, looking to do that defense. Hopefully I can get a block. Then over here for Catalyst with three intelligence, this is going to deal four damage. So let's definitely do both of these. And you can see whenever there's a slash, you can choose to do either rune to activate it. And then why don't we do true sight because this would give us some more chronicle points. This four and this four means we'll be able to take out both Draugrs this turn. We're just gonna have to soak an attack from each of them. Vulgar will have to place that second darkness though on his mistrack. He can do one more and be okay. Actually, he can do two more. If he does one more, he'd still get the benefit of the plus one chronicle point. I think we're each going to try drawing at least one more time. So we'll start with Catalyst. One, two, oh, another darkness and a strength. We're not gonna be able to place that anywhere. So that's two on our mistrack. Our third one will be another darkness. So we're going to place all three of those on our mistrack. Bummer. Uh, that definitely means we're gonna stop. Vulgar, let's see, we've got one, two oh that one will work and three two agility okay so this is great we'll be able to activate defense we'll also be able to activate sacrifice and i have no place to place the charisma unfortunately for Catalyst, all three of those we can't place anywhere vogel will place that rune he could not place here on the mistrack and Cataly will place all three of hers and that means we are definitely both going to stop drawing We've completed the planning step, moving to the resolution step, resolve the mistrack triggered effects according to the number of runes allocated to the slots. Catley won't be able to do anything, but Vulgar will. Because we're still in this blue area, we can activate all the blue status effects. Now we only have one, but that will be plus one chronicle point. Now we resolve the effects of skill and fast attack feats, if any. I don't have any fast attack feats, but I do have a skill. I have Ghost Voices 1. We gain a plus one Chronicle Point, one of these positive effects, but then a minus one to our health, and we have to place that status effect on our mistrack. Then we have to either lose two Chronicle Points or two health. I was kind of hoping I could gain the Chronicle Point here because then I wouldn't have to lose health for this, but I'm gonna go for health, I have to. <laughs> so I take two damage, and now we can place these in any order that we choose. So I'm gonna place the negative status effect first because then when you place a new status effect, it pushes the other status effects down. These two will never change from what I understand. As we gain more, these will continue to get pushed, and when they get pushed off, you discard them. So generally, you wanna have the negative ones farther to the right. Now we need to resolve the attack of all enemies by revealing enemy attack cards. So we're going to choose one of the heroes to defend the enemy attack, reveal the topmost card of the enemy attack deck and apply the modifier, and then we can choose whether we want to defend or not. We're going to have to do that twice because there's two enemies. Then we'll resolve the effects of the hero's unused attack and skill feats, and then all heroes involved in the combat may use their active items. The first Draugr will attack. We'll use Vulgar as our defender. So we're being attacked right now by two. Let's flip this card over. We have a plus zero. So we're just getting hit for two damage. There's no symbol like this. So this effect does not come into account. Currently, Vulgar's taking two damage. That means we'll definitely activate our defense one. This will give us 
2 for blocking, and that means we blocked the entire attack. If all attack was blocked, we also gain one Chronicle point. Heck yeah. We're now up to three Chronicle points for Vulgar. That was the first attack. Unfortunately, the second one is going to go undefended, but it doesn't matter. We have a miss. Reshuffle the enemy attack deck. <laughs> That is super lucky. So uh, a Vulgar takes no damage for that attack. We'll then resolve our attack feats. We each have a four attack card. This is awesome. Four attack takes out one Draugr. This one, four attack takes out one Draugr. If you activated a skill, we did activate a skill, we will gain one Chronicle Point. That was for Cataly, so Cataly will move to two Chronicle Points. Fortunately for us, we were able to take out both Draugrs in one round. I don't think that's normal. We got kind of lucky with those feats. Uh, but because of that, there's no more enemies here, so we each gain one experience point. Once we have three of those, we immediately stop our turn, level up, gaining one of our upgraded feats, level two. So I'll give one to each Catley and Vulgar. That was quite awesome. So far, game's been going pretty well. <laughs> we'll see how long it lasts. So that was the engage phase. We'll now move to the explore phase. Let's check out point of interest B. That means we're reading C1026. The tracks of the mysterious assassin and thief disappear in the rocky ground near a desolate village at the base of the mountains. You enter the only tavern, a smoky, unsavory place. The locals stare at you with suspicion and mutter to each other over their mugs. Discard point of interest B. So we're not going to be able to do that again. I will discard that. You need information, but only two patrons seem open enough to speak with you. The first is a muscular woodcutter, well on his way to being very drunk, while the second is a dwarf, probably a stranger like you, sitting alone at a table. Who will you ask? We can either speak with the drunken woodcutter or the lone dwarf. We have a dwarf in our party. Although the dwarf probably doesn't know as much because he doesn't live in this area, I still think I'm going to go for the dwarf. So let's do C1008. A tankard is always a good introduction when meeting a dwarf. He invites you to sit at his table. He introduces himself as Durlag, a wandering prospector. When you ask him for info about the assassin you are hunting, he scratches his beard before answering. I, I saw a massive fellow, an ogre pretty sure, entering the pass, but he never reached the end. There's an old dwarven mine, now dried up, lets you cross the mountains from below, much faster than climbing up the pass, if you don't mind the dangers. Seeing your reaction, he adds, I hate ogres. You know, if you want, I'll lead you through the mine, not the safest place for surfacers. Now that you have a track, you can accept the dwarf's offer to go through the mines, or you can speak to the woodcutter if you haven't. We can accept Durlog's offer, or we can speak with the woodcutter. I like Durlag. <laughs> I think he sounds cool. Let's go to C017. Uh, you follow Durlag in the damp mine. Even its interior is shrouded in mist. Almost there, the dwarf assures you. Yet the words die in his throat as the three ragged warriors, clad in shredded piecemeal armor, emerge from the darkness, silent as death. Draugrs, ghosts of fallen warriors. One of them, better dressed than the others, seems to be the leader. They advance towards you, weapons risen. If there's a warrior in the party, they may perform a strength three check uh, to challenge the leader. Oh, let's try that. Strength three, that will be vulgar. So I get to draw uh, seven tokens. Come on, seven tokens. I've got four in this bag, so I'll need to have three out of the four. Let's see, one, two, oh gosh, there's two there. One, two, three four, five, oh, come on, come on, come on. I got two more, six, seven. Look at that, there's exactly three. We just challenged the leader. House Carl, let my friends be, I challenge you. The restless soul howls and leaps into a predictable charge. With a powerful blow, you sunder his shield and your second finishes him. The monster collapses and dissolves into dust. A moment later, the other druggers fall to dust as well. Good job, their leader was the linchpin. Heck yeah. The warrior gains two chronicle points, and then read entry C1030. So far, we have not failed a skill test. Why did I say that? <laughs> but I'm happy. I mean, they've only been strength or intelligence, and that's kind of my strong points with these two, but I'll take it. When the draugers are no more, the darkness in the mine lightens, becoming less oppressive. I must confess a thing to you, Durlag says, somewhat embarrassed. "'Tis true, I saw the ogre, but he took the pass, not the passage in the mine. This place was infested with darkness. I needed to get here to find traces of my father's expedition, lost years ago, and I could not do it alone. So yes, I tricked you a bit. 
Now that the evil is banished, the mine can be reclaimed by my people. But sadly, I've seen no trace of my father, so my search goes on. Durlag gets you out of the mine and, being a skilled hunter, he leads you on the track of the ogre by way of reward and apology. I speak mountain, he says, showing a set of big tracks in the mud. Sure as stone. Then he bows deeply and gives you a ring as a token of his gratitude. Remember that Durlag the dwarf is your friend. He ends before walking away. Reveal point of interest D. Sleeve location card CS011. Uh, and then a hero in the party gains item card CS009. And then unlock side quest card CS037, the Lost King. Oh, that's a lot of fun stuff. Our point of interest D is Camp in the Woods. It's at the Ice Peak Mountains. You see the tracks seem to lead to a clearing occupied by cruel wooden huts. It looks like a forest troll camp. And we'll read C1028 when we get there. We placed Durlag's Mine in the Trollage Mountains. That's actually right where we are. We could stay here another turn, exhaust one of our hero cards to gain three Chronicle Points. And that's somewhat appealing, <laughs> uh, especially for uh, Cataly. We'll place our point of interest D right here in the Ice Peak Mountains. The Silver Dwarven Ring, without a doubt, needs to go with Vulgar just because he's a dwarf. So I'm going to simply place that right underneath his Warrior Weapons item. And he'll have that uh, after he uses this one. We'll then switch it over to the Silver Dwarven Ring. I do really like how they use the items. So you're not overpowered with too many abilities. But then once you use it, you can then move to the next one. That's, that's such a unique idea. We also have the side quest, The Lost King. A letter written in Dwarven runes urgently summons you to the White Elk Inn in Sylvan. It's signed with a D. Well, we know who that's from. I believe I put that into the stories section, and when I pick the next adventure, I could pick this as a side quest. The only difference with side quests and main quests, if you defeat enemies during a side quest, you don't gain XP because they don't want to overpower you. So, yeah, I'm going to put that on the board. Let me know if this is not right, but I'm pretty sure we can do both a point of interest and interact with the location as long as it's free of enemies, and we can do that in one explore. So I believe I can do this now, exhaust to gain three of those chronicle points. I'm going to use Cadley for that. It's a little risky, but those three chronicle points can be super helpful. And why I say it's risky is that there are a lot of enemy activations that will say either exhaust or a negative thing happens and now we have another negative effect so if ever we fill up our mist track to the red spot we're also going to have to activate this and discard one of the blue positive status effects on our mist track so i want to find a way to be able to refresh cataly fortunately there are some other locations out there that will allow us to do that so far, it's been a pretty good adventure, I think. We're going to move back to the travel phase. There's no enemies here, so we can move. Now, I do want to mention, according to the rulebook, you could split up, and I could do something like this. But that's silly, because first of all, if the dwarf took out both of those enemies, then only one of us gains the experience point. I would like to have both of us gaining experience points, plus he'd have to deal with two attacks. Might as well have us stay together. So I think I'm going to go to the Ice Peak Mountains and check out Point of Interest D. You cautiously skulk near the trolls' camp, spying from your hideout among the trees. You see several trolls and a massive ogre with two cleavers speaking with one of them. You recognize him from your dreams. He holds a stone in hand. It's the Snow Saga! You have found the thief and your mentor's killer. Discard point of interest D. We can either choose. If there's a Vintner Weaver in the party, which yes there is, they may distract the trolls with magic, or here in the party may, and that has a blue skull item, throw it at the trolls <gasps> oh, to cause a distraction or rush in the camp. Well, I think I'm going to do C-102 because I do have the Vintner Weaver. You prepare for a moment, utter a word of power, and with a wave of your hand, you summon forth the roaring, crackling illusion of a great fire in the pine forest on the opposite side of the camp. The startled trolls rush in mass to check it. You've successfully distracted them, even if you don't know for how long. Now you can deal with the ogre with two cleavers, your mentor's assassin. Place two cleavers in the region, and then reveal enemy card CS108, two cleavers, and then reveal point of interest J. It appears we found our first boss already. Oh boy, two cleavers. Now you can see here he has seven health, but there's a face there and it's multiplied. So what that means is the total health of the boss is multiplied by the number of characters in the game. That's two. So it's going to be having, it has 14 health, attacks for six, has one shield. And it has two crazy effects here. 
This one, if you see that rune, you take plus one damage for each darkness that you've drawn. And then over here, each hero in the party gains one darkness. So we can actually start gaining darkness, more of it, into our bag. That is just mean. We have the troll camp here. It's at the same space that we're at. Fight two cleavers, the ruthless assassin of Krajanti. Once we defeat him, we can then interact with this to read C1032. So what this means also is we cannot escape. We can't run away from him and just take a damage and try and do something else. He is a specific enemy for a point of interest, so I believe we have to deal with him now. Uh, yeah, wish us luck. So we'll simply move to that travel phase, ignore the travel phase, then we'll go right to the engage phase. Let's take on the two cleavers. Now what I do want to mention, we had those feet cards from before. I didn't talk about this specifically. Those are now in our discard pile. So you're not going to see those four. You're going to see the other four. Once we have those four, because likely this is going to be multiple rounds of combat, uh, w once our deck is empty, we'll then take all of our feats, shuffle them up, and redraw. We currently have no fast items, so we'll jump right to doing our feats. We've drawn four for each. This is for Cataly, and this is for Vulgar. 14 damage, you guys. <gasps> Oh man, this is going to be fun. So we'll draw three tokens for each of our characters. One, two, three. That looks good for Cataly. And then for Vulgar, we've got one, two. That's not good. Two Darkness. And our third one, one Intelligence. And we don't even have a place to put Intelligence. That was a brutal flip. You know what I'm going to do? Can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to use Vulgar. Uh, return the last ru drawn runes to your bag. I mean, that's a terrible draw. So it's going to stink, but I don't want to place all three of those on and not activate a single card yet. So we're going to put those three back in our bag. For Cataly, though, we can do something. We have two mud walls here for some defense. Since he's attacking for six, maybe we want to go on the defense to start with. So I can place those two for two defense. Oh, wait. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have no place to put my charisma. Yeah, so is it instead, or do I try and go something like this and hope for another intelligence draw? I think let's go for the guarantee to start with. Two damage blocked. We'll have to place this one onto our mistrack. We'll place that charisma right here. Okay, we're both going to draw a second time. Vulgar will start this time. I'm giving a good shake of these tokens to strength. That's what I'm talking about and an agility. Cataly will have, we have a darkness, which stinks, another charisma. Oh, that's brutal. That's going to be our third, second and third one on our mistrack and a strength. For Vulgar, we're definitely going to move towards damage, doing both of these here. So that's going to do four damage. And then I think we're going to try and fill up our defense here. Because if we fill up the defense, we have three agility in our bag. If we get a second one there, I deal two damage to the attacker. We could do this one. Oh, it's only one defense. He's attacking for six. This is two damage. This effect won't happen, but at least it's two damage to block. If we could get this one and this one, this one adds one uh, block, gains plus two defense. And we could potentially gain a positive boon. Over here, we're definitely going to do the Vintner Blast, I believe. And then these two are going to go onto our Mist Track for Cadley. At least we know we have no more Charisma in our bag, but this will fill this up. If we gain another one, we're okay, but uh, two more that we can't place out, that's going to cause all of our negative status effects to happen. That's three damage to us. I don't want that. Even so, I do think we're going to draw for both of them again. So this is for Vulgar. He has an intellect, which is useless, a strength, and a strength. Two strength would work. He's going to have to place one of those on the mistrack. For the uh, for Cataly, we'll draw these three. We have an in intel intelligence, intelligence, intelligence. All of those will work. So this intelligence will go here. This intelligence will go here. And this intelligence will go up here. Perfect. For Vulgar, we'll do, okay, uh, we want to do this one because that will give us the two block. And then Strength will go here, and we just need a Strength or an Agility to have one block gain plus two. Because the one thing is, two cleavers will only attack one time. We will have to place that Intelligence back on our board, or on our mistrack. This is only our first one, so I do think Vulgar is gonna, going to continue to draw. I do think Cataly will not. She's got two active feats that I like, 
and I am worried about activating negative effects, and she could gain two of the Chronicle tokens if she stays where she's at. Back to Vulgar Drawing, let's see what he gets. He gets two Darkness and an Agility. He could put his Agility in Parry. No, 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 we want to do here. Yeah, Shield Wall, duh, because that will be a skill which will increase the defense of our other defense, but both of these go on to our Mistrack. This will also fill up our mistrack, but fortunately for us, we're still within the blue. That definitely means we're going to pass. We're not going to continue to draw. So now we each can activate the blue positive status effects. We'll gain one Chronicle for Vulgar. He's at six. We have two Chronicle here for Catalyst. That will be at seven. We then move to activating skills or fast attacks. We don't have any fast attacks, but we do have a skill shield wall. One block gains plus two, so that will have four. Uh, and we are going to spend the two Chronicle points to gain one of these plus one shields. I'm not sure. I'm going to play that that does not come into account because we've already activated the positive status effects for this round. But if I can do that for next round and I have any other block, it'll give a plus one to whatever block I use. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong and I will put subtitles up accordingly. <laughs> Two cleavers will now attack. We will definitely use Vulgar as our defender, attacking for six plus or minus plus one. No symbol here, so neither of these activate, which is nice. Seven damage. We're then going to block for the four, so we take three damage. Ow. We just lost three health with that, and we used defense one, and we did not block all of the attacks, so we cannot gain one chronicle point. We each have a feat left that can attack. Each one deals four damage, but he does have one health. So that means we'll deal a total of six damage with each attack, three and three. Next, we can use our items. We have our warrior's weapon here. We'll spend two chronicle points to deal two more damage because once again, he can block one. So that will put him at eight damage. We then will put this to the bottom of the stack of items. He now has this one available to him. He can spend two Chronicle points to draw one feed card and play it. Makes it more likely, likely he can activate feats because he has more out. Unfortunately for us though, we will not have enough Chronicle points to use that next time. I don't love doing this, but I also think we're going to use our Vintner's Weaver's spells. We're going to spend to deal one damage twice. How I understand that each attack we use his shields, we do no damage. But the advantage of doing that is we can get to our bottom one. And we have two, which is an instant. Uh, we spend two Chronicle. Discard all darkness drawn and lose one health. That could potentially save us. So I want to have that out. We'll use up two of our Chronicle points down to a five. We only need to deal two cleavers, six more damage. I think that's pretty likely. I think we can do that. Here's our new feat cards. Remember, I had used all eight, so I shuffled them up and revealed four more. So we'll start with Vulgar here. We'll draw three. Oh, we got a Darkness, a Strength, and a Charisma. Oh, we'll be able to use the Charisma. So only one of those is going on the Mist track. And then over here for the uh, our Cataly, we have one, two, three, two Darkness. Good thing we have our Black Crystal Shard. We'll be able to get rid of that. So we're definitely going to do Crush, without a doubt, here for Vulgar. And which one do we want to use for this? Well, there's only one option. And that will be the Mud Wall. So we'll use that one. And both of these will be placed on Hermes track. One Darkness for Vulgar. Two, unfortunately, for Cataly. We're both going to draw again, without a doubt. We'll start with Vulgar. We have a Darkness, an Agility, and another Darkness. That's three darkness. Oh, and then for Cataly, we will have an intelligence, a charisma, and an intelligence. Vulgar, without a doubt, we're placing one of the agility here. And for Cataly, we've got two intelligence. I think we've got to go here so we can deal another four damage. That means we're dealing a total of three and three, which is six, which is enough. So we're going to be able to take out the two cleavers. We just need to survive his attack. Then I will place this one here, the Charisma. First, for Vulgar, we're going to place the two Darkness here. Now, somehow I have 11 health. That doesn't make sense. I had three health. Maybe I was supposed to increase this by two uh, instead of... Yeah, I think I increased the health instead of the Chronicles. What I'm going to do after this part, I'm going to rewatch it and fix where the Chronicles is at, but I do know he was at three health. So that means I might be able to do his Silver Dwarven Ring, but at this point, I didn't, so we'll just keep moving on. We're going to stop drawing for Vulgar. We're only going to do Cataly. 
I think that's the right answer. I think we're going to have Catalyst soak the attack. So we're going to have her draw three. Oh, boy. She's got... Oh, this one she can put here. She can gain two of the Chronicles. This is going to have to go to her miss track. And we can place this here. This means she has her third miss but we're still within the blue. And so because of that, I think I am simply going to stay. <laughs> oh, we're going to see if this is good. So do we have any skills? Yes, we have one skill completed. That will be true sight. So we'll gain plus two chronicle points. We'll move from five to seven. We then have two cleavers here. He's going to attack for six. We're going to use Cataly as the defender. She only has seven health. But hopefully she can survive. That's all a minus two. So uh, six minus two is only four damage. However, this is going to activate, and that's t terrible. Each hero in the party gains one darkness. So we're now each going to have six darkness in our bag instead of five. Ouch. Uh, but the nice thing is we're only getting hit for four damage instead of six. And we are going to use our mud wall block. So we'll use this to block two. So we only take two damage. We'll move from 7 to 5 total health. We then have enough attack between Crush 1 and Vintner Blast 1 to deal 8 damage. Each one will have 1 defense on it, so that's 6. 8 plus 6 is 14. That's enough to take out the boss. Yes! And Cataly will gain one more Chronicle Point. I almost missed. I was in the blue area for the miss track, so we also get to activate that. That means Cataly has 10 total Chronicle Points. Vulgar will have around six. I'll have to double check on that. <laughs> Two Cleavers is a powerful warrior, but you repel his assaults time and time again. He bleeds from many little wounds, but nevertheless, he smiles under his helm. <laughs> you fight well, he laughs, but I have no time for this now. The sky darkens from on high, and a terrible stench fills your nostrils, followed by the flap of vast wings. An enormous flying monster appears, a thorn beast, the biggest you've ever seen. It plummets towards you. You leap out of harm's way, but when you recover, you see two cleavers in a saddle upon the beast. The mighty creature flies away towards the dark woods. Your hunt for the snow saga and justice for Krajanti has only begun. I almost forgot, we each should have gained one experience. So we should each have two. We didn't get to level up anything yet, but we have two out of the three. One more and we'll level up. Now this says, unlock adventure card CS015, Thief of Darkwoods, and then read entry C1 end. I think we just finished the first adventure. I was not ready for that. I was thinking it was going to be longer. Thief of Darkwoods, all the clues you found regarding your mentor's shadowy assassin point towards the Darkwoods. If you want to avenge your mentor, you must try to travel to the murky forest and find the assassin's trail before it fades into the mist. So if we want to do this, this will be the second one in the main quest. Start on page 8, entry C2, Introduction. You return to Krajanti's tower, still unprepared to bid the last farewell to your old mentor. Krajanti's body is well preserved, another sign of his great powers in life. You clean the body with perfumed oils and place it on the funeral pyre. The flames rise tall and fierce, and within the smoke you see the ghostly figure of Krajanti. He warns you with a deep voice born on the roaring wind, Hear my, Hear my words. words. It falls, it falls upon, upon you, you to recover, recover the snow, snow saga. saga. If you, you fail, fail Fimble winter, winter will descend, descend on all Trudvang. The wind and image fades, and only the crackling flames remain. Your old mentor's time is at an end, but your adventure has just begun. The first adventure ends, but you can continue the game by selecting an adventure from the ones you've unlocked. Good luck. Oh, I don't want it to be over. That's a great sign. There's no question in my mind, I definitely want to continue playing this. I can see where people might have problems with this game, and maybe the longevity, I'll feel the same. But right now, that was fun. And look at this. I only explored, what, one, two, three, four, five out of the total three, six, nine, twelve points of interest. I was thinking we were going to have a lot more to look at. <laughs> I could have gone to location C, talked to uh, whatever that guy's name was there, Jakarti or something, and I bet you something totally different would have happened, and we maybe would have found a different side quest. So my question for you is this. What would you like to see next, Adventure 2 or the side quest? I'm kind of leaning towards Adventure 2 first so I can maybe get a level up because I only need one more XP. Remember, when, I, when we do side quests, we don't gain any XP, so I would not level up yet. I was thinking of maybe doing the main adventure. 
uh, the second one, and then after that, going to do the side quest. But if you really want to see the side quest, let me know, and I can do that instead. Also, let me know what you think of this game. As always, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting. It all helps us stay motivated and excited about playing games. And as always, I'll catch you at the next stop.